In the past, you've seen me highlight a particular passage in regards to eternal security that I regard as the undefeated text. John 10, 28. I use that passage often because as of yet, I still have not found anyone to give a argument against the Greek. Well, let me say this. I think I now have a new favorite verse. I know it sounds shocking, but I think I found a new favorite verse. As a matter of fact, interestingly enough, it employs a little bit of the same rule. As a matter of fact, not a little bit. It actually employs the same rule. And I've covered it before, but even more so now, the more that I look at it, I think this is an awesome verse. I think this shows the links that God goes through to keep us saved, him doing so. And then we're going to look at another passage also, I think, that also accompanies it. So let's go to John 10. It's still in John 10, and let's read it. He says, truly, truly, this is Jesus speaking. Now, this is him speaking. I say to you, he who does not enter by the sheep door into the, the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way, he is a thief and a robber. But he who, now I think he's speaking of Satan, <laughs> but he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. Well, who is the shepherd of the sheep? That would obviously be Jesus. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Now, he's describing this is not a condition. This could not be taken out even grammatically that the sheep have to hear his voice in order to follow him. That's not what it says. It says the sheep hear his voice. That's not a condition. This is stating what they do. The sheep are hearing. Akue, they are listening. However you want to take it. They are listening, uh, they hear his voice, and he calls them. That clearly is also not a condition. It's not that if he calls them, saying that this is what he does. He calls who? He calls his sheep by name. In other words, he calls his sheep, Corey, Frank, Mary, Sue, Sheila, Terry. He calls you by name and leads them out. He is leading them. Who's he leading out? The sheep. When he puts forth all his own, his own what? His own sheep, meaning the sheep belong to him. We're going to talk about how the sheep belong to him in the first place. He goes ahead of them. And what happens? What does it say? The sheep follow him. It doesn't say the sheep have to follow him. Uh, the sheep, if they want to be a sheep, they must follow him. He's stating what the sheep do. The sheep follow him. As a matter of fact, he even says why the sheep follow him, which indicates that there is no condition that is put upon the sheep in order to be sheep. They just are sheep and they follow him. And why do they follow him? This word here, the Greek word that's to the right that you see is the word hati, because they know his voice. It didn't say they, they, if they know his voice, they'll follow him. That's not, you cannot take it that way. So the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Now, I'm saying a lot and I have not gotten to my favorite verse, but this leads into it. What's your favorite verse, Corey? Well, glad you asked. It's the very next verse, verse Five. Look what he says. A stranger they simply will not follow, but will flee from him because, and their word hot is there again, because they do not know the voice of the stranger. Now, in John 10, 28, I invoke the, the, the rule, this emphatic negation of a subjunctive, meaning if you use a ume, two double negatives, I'm sorry, a double negative, two negatives in front of a subjunctive, then what you are doing is you are negating the possibility of this happening in the future. That's the key, especially that last part. You negate the possibility of it happening in the future. It's an emphatic negation. There's no way to get, get around it. Those who try to get around it, such as in 1028, they'll point to a different verse rather than 1028. So here's how we know one. Now, I still love 1028, but here's how we know uh, that my understanding, and it's not just my uh, I can't find a Greek grammarian who says different. There'll be some, there'll be someone who has a, a a degree, a master's, or even a doctorate, but they're not grammarians who would disagree, and they don't deal with the, with the text. But here's another text for them or others to, to to disagree with. In verse five, he says, "A stranger they simply will not follow." Well, this word "simply" actually is not there. The word that's used there is the word for follow. It is the Greek word "akluthesusen." This is a plural future active indicative. Now, I stated the rule previously about this emphatic negation. There are two ways to emphatically negate something to say that it is impossible for it to happen. One, 
a double negation in front of, of, a, of a subjunctive. A subjunctive is a word that conveys potentiality, probability. So you negate even the possibility, the probability, the possibility of it happening even in the future. The other way that's also a way to say in the Greek that it's impossible to happen is to have a double negation in front of a future active indicative. In other ways, this will never happen in the future either. So here's what we have here. We have this future active indicative that has this double negation, ume, and then this, this Greek word, akaluthesusen. He says that because of this, he says they will never, ever, 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 ever follow a stranger. But what will they do? They will flee. And oh, by the way, this is also a, this is a future, this is in future tense, but it's a middle voice. So they will never follow this person. I'm sorry, they will flee. They absolutely will flee. They will free from it or from him or whomever. So whatever is going to cause a person, whatever you think that would cause a person to stop believing, to stop following, to stop listening, to stop bearing fruit, whatever it is, it's got to be something on the outside versus something on the inside. We know what we have on the inside. If you're a believer, you have the Holy Spirit. And so here you are walking if you indeed are saved, that is, if indeed you are saved, then what is going to draw you away? What is going to captivate your attention? What is going to get you to possibly return to your old nature? Whatever it is, whatever that voice is, whatever that calling is, he says you simply will not follow it, but you will flee. Why? Because they do not know the voice of the stranger. But they do know, we do know, the sheep do know the voice of Jesus. This is what he was saying. And so this even emphatically re re rejects the possibility of anyone walking with or going towards a stranger, a strange voice, sin in the future. He says a stranger, a stranger, they simply would not follow something foreign, something belonging to another, something strange, something that is not theirs. So when we say stranger, it doesn't necessarily mean a person who they won't follow. No, anything that is foreign to uh, the spirit, anything that is foreign to our lifestyle. That's literally what this word means. This word, alatria, um, I'm sorry, alatrio, which is anything that's foreign, anything that is strange, belonging to something else, which would be sin, which would be of the world. So anything of that nature, he says, verse five, we simply will not follow. And he gives the most emphatic way to say it cannot happen now or in the future. And we know it can't happen in the future because again, this is a future active indicative. So it negates it happening in the future. Interestingly enough, you someone might even want to ask, well, how is that possible, Corey? How, how, how do you know what someone is going to do in the future? Well, because we are saved, because we have the Holy Spirit, there's a passage that we don't really equate to this topic as often as we should. We should. So let's go to Romans 8. And see if this passage makes sense in light of what I, just, what I just said. Paul says, and we know that God, the active agent, causes. He's the one. He causes all things to work together for good to those who love God. So it's God that is whatever's happening. He will cause it to work together for the good of who? Those who love him. So let's say if you are a believer, you love the Lord on day one. There are those that will contend that you won't, it's possible to not love God in a year or in a week, in a month, in five years. It's possible to follow him. It's possible to believe in him. It's possible to have faith in him today and then a year from now, a month from now, 10 years from now, not follow here, have faith. Well, what does this passage say? God will not let that happen. Why? He will cause all those things to work together. Why? For the good of those who love him. So for those who love him, those believers on day one, he is going to make sure he is going to work. And that's the word that's, that's used there. This word, this cause is sooner gay. He is going to work with all those things and cause them to work for the good of who? Those people who love them. Who do we call those people who love him? Those sheep, those sheep who love him. Cause he also says in other parts that he will cause us to uh, be his God I mean, to be to be his children, he will be our God. Uh, we will love him. He states that. And we also know that he, because that he can make these 
declarative, emphatic statements. These are reassuring statements such as we find in John 6, 37, where it says, all that the Father gives to me will come. I'm sorry, all the Father gives me will come to me. That's a promise. That's a statement. They will come. And the one who comes to me, I will certainly not cast out. Oh, by the way, there's that emphatic negation. That's ume ekbalo, which is they, there will never, ever, ever under any circumstances, the possibility of them being cast out in the future it won't happen. He says, for I come down to the will of, uh, from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. That is the father. And this is the will that all that he has given me. That's all of us sheep. He will not lose any. So all that he gives to him. He won't lose any. Why? Because even if there is a sheep that may look over there, that may want to stray away over there, that may want to walk over there, that may want to stop and look back, what is he going to do? One, he's going to go and get him because we've seen him say so, but also he's going to cause everything that's happened for the good of that sheep. Meaning it, if they lose their salvation, if they walk away forever and, are, and perish, that means he did not call that thing to work for that sheep, that person who loves him, they're good. And so it is literally impossible. And so to see, going back to my new favorite verse, going back to John 10, 5, that's why this is so reassuring. Anything that is strange, foreign, on the outside, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world outside of me. The Holy Spirit is greater than that. A stranger, which is going to cause what's going to work in us, a stranger, we simply will not or we will never, ever, ever under any circumstances follow that strange voice, that strange thing, anything that is foreign. But what we do, he says, we will, we will flee because we don't know the strange voice. But he did say that we follow him because we do know his voice. Never in the scriptures is it ever taught that we will stop knowing his voice. As a matter of fact, Jesus makes a statement himself in Matthew 7 when he speaks about these people who says many will say to me in that day Lord Lord but what is his final conclusion I never knew you he tells us in John 10 that he knows us and we know him so I just don't understand why a person would not want to believe the promises of God the comforting words of of him that he's the very same Jesus who goes to prepare a place for us and if he's going to do so he's going to come back and he can be sure that when he comes back, we'll be there waiting for him because while he's there, he's going to cause all these things to work for our good. While he's there, we won't listen to any strange voice. As a matter of fact, we will never listen to a strange voice. As a matter of fact, anything strange outside of him, we will flee. Amen.